Hello there! Welcome to DOSBox Demystified. This is a beginner's guide to DOSBox, which is a DOS emulator for playing DOS games. Uh, there's thousands of them made from 1981 to 2000 or so. And uh, perhaps you've seen them around, want to get into it, but you're not really sure. Uh, maybe you're born later and uh, weren't were born during the era of DOS gaming, don't remember it. Uh, this is going to declutter, demystify, uh, make that process a little bit easier for you so that you know how DOSBox works and uh, maybe you learn something about those old computers in the process. Uh, the internet being what it is, uh, everybody's got an opinion on things and DOSBox is no different. Vintage gaming in general is no different. Uh, people will tell you that you have to have certain settings uh, you have to run certain filters. Uh, these graphics modes better than the other graphics modes. Uh, ScumVM is better. Like, people will have their opinions. You can form your own. I'm going to show you a way of doing things, and this way is for learning purposes. Once you learn things, you can make your way of doing things however you want to do it. So the first question to answer is, is DOSBox even the right solution for you? Uh, DOSBox is basically an emulator for, for anything DOS. If it's a DOS program, DOSBox will probably run it to the point where it even runs Windows 3.1. But uh, if it's got DOS on the box, it'll probably play in DOSBox. Uh, you're able to tailor the settings of it to different machines uh, based on speed of the machine or the graphics capabilities or audio options. Uh, there's a really a lot of... Um, variety in what you can set it to do and uh, it, it works quite well if you know what you're doing. Another option is ScumVM. Uh, it's popular with point and click gaming. Uh, it has a list of games that it supports and if your game is on that list then ScumVM might be a better option for you as all of its options are in menus. It's a little bit more intuitive to figure out but uh, it is held back by that list of supported games. If the game you want to play is not on that list, then uh, ScumVM will not work for you. Uh, the third option is Vintage Hardware, which, uh, you know, if you're bold enough to own Vintage Hardware and maintain it with all those uh, leaky batteries and bad capacitors, more power to you. Uh, this one's going to be DOSBox tutorial, but uh, certainly lots of respect for you going with the old Vintage Iron Let's start at the beginning. What even is DOS? That stands for Disk Operating System, and the most popular one is Microsoft DOS, or MS-DOS. You might have seen that around. Uh, it came out originally in uh, 1981, and it was around until Windows ME, around the year 2000. Uh, the invention of Windows 95 pretty much broke the back of DOS, and uh, Windows became the boss in the operating system world after that. Uh, DOS doesn't have a GUI like Windows. There's no point and click. It's all command lines. Uh, Windows command prompt still uses it, so you may be somewhat familiar with it if you've used the Windows command prompt. Uh, it may look complicated, but it isn't really. Uh, you'll only need to know a handful of commands, really, uh, to make DOSBox work for you. Another big question to answer is which DOSBox is for you? There's bajillions of DOSBox forks. Uh, that's what they call it when an open source project uh, splits off and has different v developers with a different focus. Uh, a lots, lots of popular DOSBox forks. But for this tutorial, we're going to go with the just the original DOSBox from DOSBox.com. Uh, you can go ahead and download that. Uh, the version that happened to be the latest as I was recording this was uh, 74-3. Uh, but if you've got a newer version of it in the time since, much of this will probably still apply as uh, it doesn't change radically from update to update. Here's our tutorial game we're going to use, uh, Ultim 4 Quest of the Avatar. It originally came out in 1987 as a commercial release, but uh, in the meantime, Lord British, the designer of the game, made it freeware back in 1997, so it's free for you to download and use wherever you can find it, which you should Google it up and find a copy. Yeah, it is a top-down RPG. It has 16 color graphics, it's PC speaker sound, and it expects a CPU between 2 and 20 megahertz, which was all the rage in 1987. 
we're going to look at some file locations. The first is the configuration file or .com file. Uh, it's located in your app data folder. Uh, you don't really need to pull this up right now, but keep it in mind because the configuration file determines what kind of machine uh, our Ultima 4 is going to run under. For this, we're going to use the default options, so you don't need to change a thing at the moment. But we're going to go into that in part two. Uh, as for today, uh, make your folder C old games Ultima 4 and extract your Ultima 4 that you downloaded into it. Uh, it you need to unzip it. Don't leave it as a zip file. Uh, DOSBox likes all the files unzipped. Once you've unzipped your Ultima 4 into that folder and started up your DOSBox, this is what you're going to see. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell DOSBox to make a C drive and we're going to basically tell it to mount the C drive uh, as that old games folder. So you can use that yellow command, the mount C, C colon slash old games. Uh, if your uh, folder name has a space in it, if it was old space games, you'd need to put it in quotation marks because DOS doesn't understand spaces and it doesn't understand uh, files longer than eight characters long. Uh, the names are longer than eight characters long. Now that we've created the C drive, we can switch to it by doing the C colon slash. Uh, this is true of the drive letter. It could, it could be D or it could be E. Uh, it's the same command to switch drives. You'll notice that the command prompt changed from the Z colon slash to the C colon slash. That command prompt is always going to tell you what folder you are currently in. And once you type that C command, we'll be in the C drive, the root of the C drive, which outside of DOSBox is the C colon slash old games. Now we're going to try out the directory command, which is DIR. You do dir and enter, and it will list all of the files and folders that are in the current folder that you're in. Uh, DOS calls them directories. Uh, Windows calls them folders, but they're basically the same thing. Uh, as I was talked a little bit about earlier, uh, DOS can't really handle anything that has more than eight characters as a file name. Eight, eight characters dot three characters is all you get and it also doesn't understand spaces or special characters that sort of thing that maybe windows can support dos is not that advanced so if dosbox encounters windows folders that are not compliant with these old rules it will automatically convert them over and shorten them to uh, six characters and then a tilde one tilde two if there's more than one that sort of thing so if you're doing a dir command and you end up with a bunch of entries that have tilde 1, tilde 2 at the end. That's what's happening. It, the DOSBox is interpreting those in a different way than Windows does. That's, But it's normal operation, even though it looks weird. All right. So the reason that we're using these DIR commands is to find the executable for the game. Uh, in DOS, there's three possibilities. There's the .exe, the .com, and the .bat. Uh, all of them are technically different, but for our purposes, you execute them all the same way, and that's by typing the name of the file and pushing enter. But to do that, you got to find them first, and to do that, you use a dir asterisk.exe, and that will tell DOSBox to list all the exe files in this folder. In this case, there's three of them, but none of them is the actual game. Uh, it's not uncommon in DOS games for to have programs that call other programs, so finding the right one can be a little bit tricky. You can try to execute them, but if it's the wrong one, you might get an error message or the game might partially load or other weird things like happen might happen. But usually the right executable file is something obvious and something like the title of the game. In this case, it's ultima.com. So if you do a dir asterisk.com, that'll come up. And you can run it by just typing ultima.com. And there we go. We've run the game. It's executing. Uh, it's fully playable. It's the complete game. Uh, if you're into classic RPGs, give it a whirl. It's one of the uh, breakout hits of the era. Then that's it for this particular course. But we're going to move on in part two where we're going to learn how do we streamline this so you don't have to type in all those commands every time. You can just click an icon and boom, it's going. And along with that, uh, how do we make it full screen? How do we make it scale properly? We're going to learn all that in part two. Uh, this one was a little bit short. I'm new to the whole YouTube thing, so timing, I haven't worked it out yet. 
But uh, if you think I did okay, give me a like, give me a subscribe, do the YouTube thing, and I'll see you in a part two.